Shane Dawson posted a new video yesterday and he's exposing a popular discount store chain for something pretty disgusting. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Shane's latest upload is very reminiscent of his 2019 pre-cancellation beauty guru days. He invited Jeffrey on to get his insight on what Shane was exploring and it had to do with makeup products. But not just any makeup products. Shane was taking a look at a store where it said that makeup goes to die. The discount stores. Whenever an influencer gets cancelled, whenever an influencer brand fails, when a product flops and the stock doesn't move, it usually ends up in these discount stores. Shane said that this video was four years in the making. Shane wanted to know if these discount stores were putting damaged, returned items back on the shelves for customers to buy. Shane never said the name of the actual store, but I mean, it's extremely obvious what store they're in. If you've ever been in one of these discount stores, you know you're either walking into a beautifully put together, organized, fully stocked cosmetics section, or you're walking in to a complete disaster. Now, I know Shane isn't talking about winners in this video, I'm just gonna use that as an example since it's under the TJ Maxx branding and that's where I go to, but my local winners is literally amazing. It's always fully stocked, it's always clean, you rarely see any opened or damaged products, but they aren't all like that. Some of them are filled with makeup that's been damaged, makeup that's clearly been opened and swatched by customers. It can get really gross. But Shane had a theory that it went even further than customers just opening products in the store and messing them up. He thinks some of these discount stores are actually putting return makeup back on the shelves to increase their profit. Usually when makeup is returned, it's destroyed and discarded by the store selling it. You can't put something that you're putting on your face back on the shelf when you don't know what the person who returned it did to it. It's a huge health and safety hazard, and that's why these stores are meant to literally destroy the product before throwing it in the bin. If that's not happening, then this store could get in huge trouble. Shane set out to one of these discount stores and he bought a ton of products to take home and examine. Some of them were in perfect condition, some of them came broken, and some he purposely destroyed to make sure that they were in unsellable condition. Okay, so here's my plan because I want to be very sanitary and safe. So which palette should we mess with and then return? So these were the ones that already had something sort of defective. And then these were the ones that were just flat out broken. Do you think this one? I mean, that one already has a fingerprint. Okay. So if you made another fingerprint, I feel like it'd be pretty obvious. I'm gonna make it very obviously used to a point where an employee or somebody there would be like, don't put that on the shelf. Okay. Maybe try to get like a fingernail divot in it too. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. They also decided to mark the package that they would be returning with a little star inside the package so when they returned it, they could easily identify if it was put back on the shelf. They made the return and then they went back the next day to check if the damaged, contaminated makeup was put back on the shelf for sale. And you guys, they put the dirty return makeup back on the shelf for people to buy. Okay, you ready? I'm just gonna rip it. Okay. One, two, three. <gasps> oh my God, no. Like that is so beyond disgusting. Someone could pick that up, think it's discounted just because it's maybe a little bit broken from shipping or something, buy it and be using makeup that someone stuck their fingers in and used on themselves. Used return makeup should not be discounted and put back up for sale. Sure, if a product comes in off the truck, it's brand new, and it got a little bit damaged from shipping, discount it. But putting stuff you apply to your face that's been returned back on the shelf is negligence on the store's part. Now, as we were talking about earlier, Shane had done this video a few years back, and he had multiple different people in multiple different states all do the same thing. They went out, bought makeup, returned it, and they all ended up back on the shelves. So this isn't an issue that's isolated to one bad store with bad management. This is happening across the nation, and that's terrifying to think about. I know me personally, whenever I buy makeup from one of these stores, I always make sure I'm only buying stuff that's clearly sealed. You can tell when a top of a lipstick has been swiped, you can tell when seals have been broken, and that's why it's so important to pay attention to those things. 
Even if some of these stores do actually destroy their returns, that doesn't mean other customers aren't opening things and swiping their fingers in them to try them out. You have to be so careful. A lot of people who've either worked for this discount store or similar stores have left their experience with returns and it seems like this is an issue with management. Here's what people had to say. The fact that they put them back on the shelf hurts my soul. I can promise I used to work at TJ Maxx as a coordinator slash supervisor in the beauty and women's department. I spent most of my shifts checking makeup and throwing out anything with the smallest touch and returns were thrown away immediately. That is policy for all Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and so on. It wasn't them doing their job. It was pure laziness by the team. It's part of policy to throw away all returns and to regularly check beauty departments for tampered goods. That entire team would be fired by corporate if they knew this was happening. Negligence is all I can say. Customers touch everything, and sadly, not everything can be caught, such as mascara and such, but the normal team tries to make sure it doesn't happen. Well, at least mine did. I worked at Ulta for a few years and can confirm that we did indeed destroy used makeup from testers and from returns. The sales associates literally had to scrape out pans of powders and pour out liquid products. They were very thorough about it all. As someone who used to work at TJ Maxx, I can confirm that if a product is found damaged, they just discount it and put it in the clearance section. And the crazy thing is that people will actually buy it. And yes, they do tape up damaged packaging as well. They are told just to tape the package back up and put it back on the shelf. Even though Shane didn't say the name of the store, it's clear what store this is, and hopefully if anything comes from this video, maybe this will get corporate's attention and make them start being stricter with returns and what goes back on the shelves. That's not the only conspiracy theory that Shane talked about in this video. He also talked about dupes that might be duping a little bit too hard. He compared this lip gloss from YSL, which retails for $45, and a lip gloss that looks very similar by L'Oreal that's only a couple of dollars. When he tested them out, they were pretty much exactly the same. The colors were similar, and Shane found this shocking. <gasps> Wait a minute! No! <laughs> I am so... Wait. No way. Oh my god. Okay, this is crazy. I feel like I need to try this on my actual lips. How is this real? This might be the craziest makeup conspiracy so far because once again, not confirmed, but are you kidding me? L'Oreal, you have some explaining to do. Personally, I don't find this as shocking. Yes, it is ironic that L'Oreal owns YSL, so people who buy the YSL one are pretty much getting ripped off, but people who pay $45 for a lipstick probably don't care. A lot of people out there only care about using brand name stuff, so that's not going to matter to them. I'm sure that every single high-end brand out there has a product that's literally just repackaged from a cheaper parent company with a higher price tag. The next theory Shane talked about was about mascara. Shane explored the conspiracy that some of these brands are making their mini sizes of their mascara have a better formula compared to the full sizes. He's wondering if they make you get hooked on it with the mini so you go out and purchase the full size and once you buy the full size, it's not as good and they already have your money as long as you don't return it. Shane said one of the biggest complaints about this happening is with the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. Apparently, there's a lot of people out there who claim the mini is way better than the full size. Shane ended up trying it out for himself, and both him and Rylan agreed that the mini size side looked better. Sample. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. I don't know. I kind of feel like this side is thicker. Like, it's more volume. Hold on. The sample size looks thicker to me, right? It just does. And at first, I was like, wait, he might actually be onto something. But once I looked into it, I think there's a pretty logical explanation for why this might be happening. If you look up reviews, there's tons of people talking about full size versus mini, and tons of people complain about their minis always being way better than the full size. So clearly it is an issue, but it does sound like there's a reason. Not only are minis the perfect size bottle with the perfect size applicator for the eye area, allowing you to have even better control over the wand and the final result, but you also use the mini quick with a full-size product, it obviously takes longer to use up, meaning more air is getting at it with every use, making you notice it performing worse over time. Alert talked about this very theory, writing, 
Travel or sample size mascara are genius because you're able to use the formula to its fullest potential. Since every second liquid makeup is exposed to air, its formula becomes weakened. So maybe it's not as much as a conspiracy theory as it is a money-saving theory. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below, and I'll see you next time.